in chapter 2, module 3, we shall consider some examples. We shall apply the theory of Fredholm alternative to solve some Fredholm integral equation of second kind with degenerate kernel. We consider example 1. Here we shall analyze and solve the integral equation given by 2.61 where phi x is the unknown function, f x is the forcing function which is known and the kernel of the integral equation is sin of x plus t and lambda is a parameter. We rewrite this equation by expanding sin x plus t in the form given by this equation. Now, in this form, the integral 0 to pi cos t phi t dt, it is a constant and we denote this by gamma 1 and this integral 0 to pi phi t dt sin t, it is another constant which we denote by gamma 2. This gamma 1 and gamma 2, these are unknown constants to be determined as it contains phi t which is the unknown of the integral equation. Gamma 1 and gamma 2 are given by equation 2.62. So, substituting gamma 1 for this integral and gamma 2 for this integral, we obtain the expression for phi x as given in the equation 2.63. Now, I substitute phi x from 2.63 into the relations given by equation 2.62 and thus we obtain a system of linear equation in gamma 1 and gamma 2 as given by equation 2.64. The right hand side, the functions beta 1 and beta 2, they are the constants given by equation 2.65. Beta 1 and beta 2 are related with the forcing function phi f t. Now, we find the unique solution of the system of equation 2.64 if the determinant of the coefficient matrix is not equal to 0, which is given by this. So, this gives lambda not equal to plus minus 2 by pi. So, for lambda not equal to plus minus 2 by pi, we can get the unique solution of the system of linear equations and these are given by gamma 1 and gamma 2 which are given in the equation 2.66. So, once gamma 1 and gamma 2 are obtained, we substitute gamma 1 and gamma 2 in the equation 2.63 to obtain phi x as given by equation 2.67. Now, I substitute beta 1 and beta 2 defined earlier in the expression given in equation 2.67 
to obtain phi x in this form, where if I denote this expression by r r x t lambda, then this r x t lambda, it is the resolvent kernel of the solution. So, phi x given here is the unique solution of the given integral equation when lambda is not equal to plus minus 2 by pi. Next, we considered the case when lambda equal to plus minus 2 by pi. Now, from equation 2.64, if we substitute lambda equal to 2 by pi, then 2.64 becomes gamma 1 minus gamma 2 equal to beta 1 and gamma 1 minus gamma 2 equal to minus beta 2. So, for lambda equal to 2 by pi, we get beta 1 plus beta 2 equal to 0 for lambda equal to 2 pi. Similarly, substituting lambda equal to minus 2 by pi in the equation 2.64, we observe that beta 1 minus beta 2 equal to 0 for lambda equal to minus 2 by pi. Now, substituting the value of beta 1 and beta 2 in these two expressions, we find that they give rise to equation 2.68. For lambda equal to 2 by pi, we get the first relation involving the forcing function f t and cos t plus sin t and for lambda equal to minus 2 by pi, we get the second relation. Now, we observe that the homogeneous integral equation corresponding to the given integral equation for lambda equal to plus minus 2 by pi is given by equation 2.69. Here, the kernel k x t equal to sin x plus t is a real symmetric kernel. Hence, the homogeneous integral equation 2.69 are self adjoint. That means, the adjoint equation and equation 2.69, they are the same. We have already obtained the solution of homogeneous integral equation 2.69 in example 4 of chapter 2, module 2, which you can refer from the E content and it can be verified that the function phi x equal to 2 by pi sin x plus cos x satisfies the homogeneous integral equation 2.69 for lambda equal to plus 2 by pi. At the same time, sin x plus cos x also satisfies the first relation of 2.68. Similarly, we will see that phi x equal to minus 2 by pi sin x minus cos x satisfies the homogeneous integral equation 2.69 for lambda equal to minus 2 by pi 
and at the same time it also satisfies the second relation of 2.68. So, if you recall the theory of Fredholm alternative, then we can say that the integral equation given integral equation has non-unique solution for lambda equal to plus minus 2 by pi. Now, if I substitute lambda equal to 2 by pi in the system of linear equations 2.64, then it reduces to gamma 1 minus gamma 2 equal to beta 1. Now, taking gamma 2 equal to L 1, we can write gamma 1 equal to L 1 plus beta 1, where L 1 is an arbitrary constant. So, substituting gamma 1 and gamma 2 in the integral equation, solution of integral equation we find phi x is given by this expression. And we also note that first relation of equation 2.68 holds. So, this is the non-unique solution of the given integral equation when lambda is equal to 2 by pi and L 1 is an arbitrary constant. Similarly, for lambda equal to minus 2 by pi, the non-unique solution of the given integral equation can be similarly obtained and it is given by phi x equal to 2 by pi into L 2 sin x plus cos x plus f x plus 2 by pi sin x integral 0 to pi t cos t dt. Here L 2 is an arbitrary constant and also the second relation of equation 2.62 holds. So, we find here phi x here it gives the non-unique solution of the given integral equation where L 2 is arbitrary constant. In example 1, we have seen that the integral equation is consistent. For certain values of the parameter lambda, non-unique solution of the integral equation exists, while for other values of lambda, unique solution of the integral equation exists. Next, we consider two more example and see what happens. We consider example 2. We shall solve the given integral equation where f x is the is a real valued continuous function in the interval 0 1. Now, we can rewrite this given integral equation in the form given by equation 2.71. Now, in equation 2.71, we define the integral 0 to 1 phi t dt as the constant gamma 1 and the integral 0 to 1 t phi t dt as the constant gamma 2 as given in equation 2.72. Here gamma 1 and gamma 2 are unknown constants as 
they are related to the unknown function phi t. So, defining gamma 1 and gamma 2 as given in equation 2.72, we can rewrite the equation 2.71 in the form given by equation 2.73, where gamma 1 and gamma 2 are unknown constants. If somehow we can de determine gamma 1 and gamma 2, then from 2.73 phi x can be determined which is the solution of the given integral equation. We substitute now phi x from equation 2.73 into the expressions for gamma 1 and gamma 2 as given by 2.72 to obtain a system of linear equation in gamma 1 and gamma 2 as given by equation 2.74. Here the function functions or rather the constants f1 and f2 on the right hand side of equation 2.74 are given by equation 2.75. F1 and F2 are related to the forcing function Ft. Now observe the equation 2.74. If we closely observe the equation 2.74, we can see that the solution of system of linear equation 2.74 are not unique. So, the non-unique solution of this system will exist if and only if the relation given by 2.76 hold. Here, xi1 and xi2 satisfy the adjoint homogeneous system given by 6 xi 1 plus 3 xi 2 equal to 0 minus 12 xi 1 minus 6 xi 2 equal to 0. From this system of linear equation, if you observe closely, then we find that xi 2 equal to minus 2 xi 1 as given in equation 2.77. So, if we substitute xi uh, 1 from the relation 2.77 in the relation 2.76, we obtain the relation f 1 minus 2 f 2 equal to 0 for xi 1 not equal to 0. Now, we know the expression for f 1 and f 2 which are related to the forcing function f t. If we substitute f 1 and f 2 from relation 2.71, we obtain the relation 2.78 in 2.78 you observe that the product of the function 1 minus 2 t and f t dt and the integral of that is equal to 0. And we can verify that the function 1 minus 2 x which is denoted by psi x satisfies the adjoint homogeneous integral equation given by this equation. Hence, by Fredholm alternative theory, in this case, we see that 
non-unique solution of the given integral equation exist. Now, from relation to point 74, we can express gamma 1 in terms of gamma 2 as gamma 1 equal to 2 gamma 2 plus f 1 by 6. So, if we take gamma 2 as arbitrary constant L 3, then gamma 1 can be expressed as gamma 1 equal to 2 L 3 plus f 1 by 6. Hence, gamma 1 and gamma 2 are written in terms of the arbitrary constant L 3. We now substitute gamma 1 and gamma 2 in the relation to point 73 and we obtain the non-unique solution of the given integral equation as given by equation 2.79 where f t satisfies the condition 2.78. So, in this example, we see that unique solution of the given integral equation does not exist and we only get non-unique solution. Next, we consider example 3. Here, the given integral equation 2.8 can be rewritten in the form given by this. Here, if we assume this integral 0 to 1 phi t dt as a constant gamma 1 and the integral 0 to 1 t phi t dt as the constant gamma 2 as given by equations 2.82 and 2.83, then the equation phi given by phi x equal to lambda into integral phi t dt minus 3 x lambda integral t phi t dt plus 1 becomes phi x equal to lambda gamma 1 minus 3 x lambda gamma 2 plus 1 as given by equation 2.81. So, if we can determine gamma 1 and gamma 2 which are unknown constants as they are related to the unknown function phi, then Substituting gamma 1 and gamma 2 in equation 2.81, we can obtain the solution phi x of the given integral equation. So, our task is now to obtain gamma 1 and gamma 2. Now, if I substitute phi x from equation 2.81 into the expression for gamma 1 and gamma 2 as given by equation 2.82 and 2.83, we obtain the system of linear equation in gamma 1 and gamma 2 as given by equation 2.84. Now, this system of linear equation has unique solution if the determinant of the coefficient matrix is not equal to 0 and this determinant is given by this expression. Expanding this determinant, we find that lambda is not equal to plus minus 2. So, for lambda not equal to plus minus 2, we can uniquely solve the system of equation 2.84 and the unique solutions are given by gamma 1 
and gamma 2 as given in this expression. Now, substituting gamma 1 and gamma 2 in equation 2.81, we obtain the solution of the given integral equation as given in 2.85, where lambda is not equal to plus minus 2 and this gives the unique solution of the given integral equation. Next, we consider the case where lambda is equal to plus 2 or minus 2. Now, if we consider lambda equal to plus 2, then you can observe that from equation 2.84, this system of linear for lambda equal to plus 2 becomes minus gamma 1 plus 3 gamma 2 equal to 1 and minus gamma 1 plus 3 gamma 2 equal to half, which is obviously inconsistent. Hence, for lambda equal to 2, the given integral equation is inconsistent. That means for lambda equal to 2, the given integral equation does not possess any solution. Similarly, for lambda equal to minus 2, the system of linear equations 2.84 becomes 3 gamma 1 minus 3 gamma 2 equal to 1 and gamma 1 minus gamma 2 equal to half, which is also inconsistent. Hence, for lambda equal to minus 2 also, the given integral equation does not possess any solution. That is, it is inconsistent. So, for if lambda is equal to plus minus 2, then the given integral equation does not have any solution. Otherwise, it possess, possesses unique solution. In this module, we have illustrated the theory of Fredholm alternative through the three given examples where we have solved integral equation of second kind of Fredholm type with degenerate kernel. With this module, I conclude chapter 2.